and you are watching Roger Walker on Slasher Pepper. Enjoy that shit, motherfuckers! Hey guys, Slasher Pepper here, and welcome to another video. Today, this is probably the most controversial video I have done. So first, I'm gonna give a little backstory on how I did this ranking. If you don't want to hear my nonsense, then skip to this timestamp and um, enjoy. And this is probably gonna be one of the most disliked videos, but um, you know, I I did feel like I need to be honest with rankings, right? I mean, what what is the fucking point of rankings anyways then? To fit in with the main crowd and have the same list over and over again, right? You know? No, it's not. So this is this is my very personal ranking, and um, I decided to really look at how many songs I liked, how many songs I loved, and how many songs I found mediocre on each album. There are no songs I hate. There are just a few that I find mediocre and where I'm like, you know, I don't really like to listen to this one that much. Um, but most of the songs I really love or or like. So uh, you know, but I came to a ranking. That uh, actually was surprisingly, <laughs> very surprisingly, um, controversial. And I also saw some other rankings online, which made no sense to me. Because, for example, they were like, Iron Fist was on number 9, I think, or somewhere around there. And they said, oh, this is not a good, really a good album. Um, Iron Fist stands out, but other than that, there are not a lot of songs that really stand out. And I'm, and then... You know, lower on the list, um, so in, in their opinions, worse than Iron Fist was Inferno. And they mentioned, oh, this song is great, this song is great, and this song is great. Like, five songs that I really liked. But then I'm like, you know, you only like the one song from Iron Fist, which is the title of the album. But you, somehow you put that higher than, Iron, <laughs> than Inferno. That makes no sense to me. It's like they are, oh, this is a classic album, it's one of the older albums, so we can't put it higher than... than than that one, you know, we can't put Inferno over that one because Iron Fist is a classic and an old one, an oldie. Just because it's an oldie doesn't mean it's better, you know. And my list definitely shows that I feel that way. <laughs> anyway, without rambling on, here's uh, my ranking of every single Motorhead album. Okay, so coming in on number 22, it's going to be March or Die. I don't own a physical copy of it, so I'll just have to put a picture up there or there. Probably there, you see it? Fucking great cover, isn't it? I can't see it, but I, I know what it looked like. Um, it's it's a fine album, and I actually read Lemmy's uh, autobiography, and he uh, he thought this album was underrated. I don't agree, Lemmy. <laughs> there are some things we do agree on later, but uh, March or Die sucks ass. I don't listen to it a lot. Um, I like Hellraiser. I like um, I Ain't No Nice Guy uh, with Ozzy Osbourne and Slash. I like You Better Run. Which they did a parody of in 2005 or 4, I think. Um, when Spongebob the movie came out, they did You Better Swim. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. But besides that, there's not a lot to this album. And I don't really like it. I don't listen to it an awful lot. Besides those songs I just pointed out, I listen to those um, just randomly on their own. March or Die, the title track, is pretty good too. Uh, but not something I... I it's kind of experimental, you know, not really something I can headbang to or something, you know. So yeah, March or Die coming in on last place. Still not a bad album, you know. Just most songs are mediocre, but are still songs that are fantastic. Like Hellraiser, like I Ain't No Nice Guy, and like You Better Run. Next up is going to be 1916. I don't listen to this album a whole lot. There are some really good songs on this one. Like the one to sing the blues, that one is cool. I'm so bad, baby, I don't care. That one I really love. And Ramones, Love Me Forever is kind of a slower song that I really like. 1916 is quite interesting, but not something I would listen to Motorhead for. I wouldn't listen to Motorhead because I'm like, ah, oh, yes, I want to listen to that 1916. I love that song so much. It's, just, um, it's a good song, don't get me wrong, but like, it's not something I would listen to Motorhead for. Which some of their ballads are great, um, but I think 1916 is definitely one of their weaker ballads, you know. It's not a bad song, the lyrics are great, and actually it made one of the people that was at that battle in 1916 uh, cry when he heard that, so, you know, it definitely hit some people that actually were at that battle. But yeah, you know, other than that, it's not a song I like to listen to a whole lot, and I almost rather just, like, 
skip the song when I'm listening to this album. Angel City is also pretty good. It's about Los Angeles, where I want to live later. So yeah, solid songs and a few mediocre ones, to be honest. And I think a lot of people tend to really like 1916, so I think I'm already being controversial here. Next up is going to be Aftershock, and um, I, I love a lot of songs in this one, like Heartbreaker, Lost Woman Blues, Do You Believe, Death Machine, Going to Mexico, Silence When You Speak to Me, uh, Queen of the Damned. Um, but it's just that the songs besides those are kind of mediocre to me, and I, I like them for what they are. Um, they're just not really re-listenable or memorable. Just when reading the titles, they don't like pop into my head instantly like I have some of the albums that come after this. So, I also don't really tend to re-listen to this album a whole lot. There are definitely albums I re-listen a lot more than this one, which is why this one is so low. It's still a very solid album. This one I do have on uh, a physical copy of. This is number 19, and on number 19 we have... Surprise, surprise! <laughs> Self-titled, that's right. Um, I think this one is kind of controversial. You got Motorhead, Vibrator, uh, Iron Horse slash Born to Lose, White Lion Fever. And those are like the most memorable songs to me. Those like pop into my head when reading the titles. Uh, but the other songs are kind of, I don't know. This also features like these songs, you know, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. Yeah, you know, it's some, It's a great album when I listen to it, but it just takes months before I really feel like re-listening to this. This is a great release, though. Got a cool vintage photos in there, you know. So, yeah. Still a pretty solid uh, album. A great debut album, but some of their later stuff was just way better. All right, so now number 18, I also have a physical copy of. This is Rock and Roll. And this one features two classics, in my opinion, which is the title song, Rock and Roll. And Eat the Rich is also really good. Um, then Trader is, is one I like, but, um, you know, it's not one of my favorites, you know. It's the one where I go like, oh, Trader. Yeah, that's Motorhead, you know, that, not not for me. Um, but I like it, and then the rest of the songs I really like. I love less songs on this album, but I like more songs in this album, you know, which is why this one is over Aftershock, because at Aftershock, I love a lot of them, but then the rest of them are mediocre. With this one, this one I love a few, and really like the other ones still. Uh, not really a few, a few mediocre ones, for sure, but uh, yeah, it still makes it a little bit higher on the list. So yeah, rock and roll. Great cover art as well, so that has to be pointed out. Next up, we have Snakebite Love. Really dig this album. I find myself re-listening to it quite a few times. Um, so, Love for Sale is a classic, and for all of the horror viewers of mine, Love for Sale, the first song, was also on a Bride of Chucky soundtrack. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, then Dogs of War is pretty good. Snakebite Love, the title track, really great. Assassin, uh, has a very weird but interesting kind of experimental tone, especially with like the vocals. Uh, Lemmy's vocals are kind of, they did something in production with it. It's pretty cool. And Take the Blame, I love. It's it's about politicians and like, you can take my money, but can you take the blame? You know, <laughs> I just love that. Um, Don't Lie to Me really reminds me of a song in Sacrifice. Don't Lie to Me and Don't Waste Your Time on Sacrifice sound really familiar. Kind of like more of a bluesy type thing, you know? Kind of got some blues going on. You can definitely tell that that had some influence on those. So yeah, those songs are the ones that really stand out. The rest are kind of mediocre, which is why um, Snake Bite Love hits number 17. Next up is going to be Iron Fist on number 16. Lemmy was never really a big fan of this one, I believe. I, I like Iron Fist, uh, I'm the Doctor, and then I also like Speed Freak and Don't Need Religion. The rest are kind of mediocre and forgettable. You know, it's the album as a whole, it's 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 fine. I find myself really listening to this every once in a while. I guess it's one of the essential Motorhead albums because it still is the, um, the original lineup, you know. Um, 
and Iron Fist is a classic. I'm not sure if I would say it's an essential album. Iron Fist is like one of their essential songs, but other than that, there are not any like classics on it, you know? Um, really, if you want to get into a band, don't just listen to the essential albums because really you should find out what you think is essential, you know? I mean, someone might say this is their favorite album. It's, I can't say I agree with them, but you know, if, if you think so, hey, more power to you, right? But for me, Iron Fist doesn't really do it, uh, so number 16. Next up is gonna be Hammered. I really like this album. Walk a Crooked Mile is really good. Down the Line, Brave New World. Uh, Mine All Mine, which is also kind of a bluesy sort of, um, sort of song. Uh, then you also got Dr. Love, which I really like. No Remorse, and my favorite song from the album is Red Raw. Which is a really aggressive, loud, and fast song. Uh, Walk a Crooked Mile is interesting because they kind of did something with Lemmy's vocals. It's almost, it's not really auto tune or anything, but it sounds kind of like it is auto tune. <laughs> I don't know what they did with that, um, but it's kind of weird. Um, I wouldn't say I dislike it though. It, I don't know, it's kind of a unique sound for, for Lemmy's vocals. The closing track, Serial Killer, is just basically Lemmy giving sort of a speech, and it's really. Intense and, and kind of creepy some good atmosphere there uh, Which I really like so Yeah, hammered is a very solid album and I it really has grown on me because this used to be one of my least favorites um, But I have it on vinyl now, too, so I got to listen to it a lot more I really like it now. So yeah number 14 We are motorhead And we play rock and fucking roll and this one has some good songs like see me burning slow dance Stay out of jail, then the Sex Pistols cover, God Save the Queen. Out to Lunch, I also really like. So, Side A really has five songs that I all really like. Um, then, Side B has Wake the Dead. Uh, one of my favorite ballads by the Aeros, uh, One More Fucking Time, which is really emotional and, and really good. Uh, stage Fright, Crash and Burn. Uh, and We Are Motorhead. It also has Wearing Your Heart on Your Sleeve, which is one of the my least favorite songs. This album, I don't really like that one as much as the rest. And of course, We Are Motorhead kind of went back to like their classic roots in terms of sound. Kind of sounds like Overkill or, or something like that, which I think is really cool because the song is about the band. So you would expect them to have like their original sound back just for that song, right? So We Are Motorhead, uh, I really like. I once saw a review of this album, or like in a ranking, they were talking about this album, and they said like, you know, this album isn't, it's its fine, but they didn't have that classic sound back, which is so stupid to me, because Motorhead never tried to get their original sound back, you know, they never had an original sound anyway, you know, because um, you got the original, uh, self-titled, you got Overkill, uh, Ace of Spades, Bomber, Iron Fist, whatever, and they all sound different. They all sound, they all are Motorhead albums, and they all sound like Motorhead, but all slightly different than the other, you know? So they never had <laughs> the original sound, they had never had, like, the essential Motorhead sound, and they never tried to sound like the original Motorhead again, you know? So I don't get why some people are like, oh, they almost had their original sound back, but just not yet there. It's like, did they ever get the original sound back then? Do you think that, what, Bad Magic or Aftershock has the original sound again? Because truly, those albums don't. So <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that guy was thinking. And, and But yeah, you know, let's not ramble on about that. Number 14, We Are Motorhead. Number 13 is going to be Kiss of Death. Uh, some very solid ones on this one. Uh, great opening track, Sucker, which I don't hear a lot of people talk about that one, but I love. One Night Stand is also really good. God Was Never On Your Side is one of the more popular tracks on this one. I think that's actually in the top five of their Spotify uh, like list of most listened to. Christine, uh, Tim's dad, actually recommended to me once before I listened to the entire album and the entire Motorhead discography, and, and I really like that one. Um, Be My Baby, I love that one, that's like my favorite track from this album. And Kingdom of the Worm is like a really intense song with, or Lemmy does like these heavy vocals that remind you of Orgasmatron or Brotherhood of Man or songs like that, you know? So, yeah, Kiss of Death is a very solid album, one of their heavier ones. Uh, I can't recommend that one enough. 
Coming in on number 12 is gonna be Motorizer. This is one that also really grew on me. It used to be like number 20, 21, 20, like really low on the list, um, but it really grew on me. Run Around Man is really good. Teach You How to Sing the Blues is really good. Uh, when Eagle Screams, Rock Out, <laughs> you know, that's a classic. Uh, eventually, let me even sing so Rock Out with your cock out. So that's really like a, Kind of reminds me of like We Are Motorhead, which is just like we are here and we're rocking out and we are motorhead. It's also like we are here and we are motor and we play rock and roll for you, you know? So um, that's really good. And then the slower song, One Short Live. Uh, English Rose I really like. It's um it has a cool vocal intro. I've been waiting for you for hours, babe, and you still laying here. The phone, it feels like a hundred years. The Thousand Names of God is one of my favorites from this album. And you also have Heroes. Uh, not the David Bowie cover, not yet, but I like that one too. I really like Heroes. So yeah, Motorizer, I really like and I recommend you listen to it an extra few times if you hated it the last time. Because it's not bad. Next up is one of the classics. It's uh, Bomber. Which I really like. So it is one also has like that man tell no tales, lawman, sweet revenge, sharpshooter, poison, stone dead forever, all the aces, uh, and bomber. Those are my favorites. You also have stamp down, which is sung by Eddie Clark. It's kind of interesting. That's the only song on their studio albums where somebody else is singing. I'm not big of a fan of it though. I think Lemmy's vocals are just. You know, you need Lemmy's vocals <laughs> when listening to Motorhead, right? I mean, else Motorhead would still exist and make albums now. Um, but no, that wouldn't work. So, why would one song without Lemmy work? It doesn't. Number 10 is going to be their last album, Bad Magic. Um, which has a really cool song, Victory or Die. Which is one of my favorite songs by Motorhead ever. Then follows up really fast with Thunder and Lightning. Uh, Firestorm Hotel, Shoot at All of Your Lights. I mean, all of these titles are great. Till the end is kind of like a farewell by Lemmy almost. Of course, we knew his health wasn't the best at the time. So maybe he wrote that thinking like, this is one of the, this is like my farewell to the fans and my friends and family. Uh, so yeah, who knows, right? Uh, when the Sky Comes Looking For You is also uh, a true Motorhead classic now. In my eyes, at least. I kind of don't really... I don't... I don't really like that uh, Sympathy For The Devil is the last song by Motorhead, like, ever on a studio album. You still have the cover album, Undercover, you know, which has... Which ends up with Whiplash, which is much more appropriate for a final song by Motorhead, in my opinion. Just end off loud... You know, at least loud. So, but now they end up kind of a, sort of a slower song and a cover, you know. I know Whiplash is also covered by Metallica, but at least it's a loud song about heavy metal, right? So, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, if, if it ended up with this guy that comes looking for you, much better in my opinion. <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be a tough one for some of you to accept. Just come to terms with how did it dare he put this one so low, right? You could probably already expect what album this is gonna be now. Um, or at least you have a few in mind that, that could be like mind-blowing why it's so low. Well, I hate to break it to ya, but number nine is gonna be Ace of Spades. <laughs> I really don't just do this to piss you guys off. I do this because I really truly feel like Ace of Spades is not one of their best album well it is one of their best albums but then again there are also other albums that are, i mean all of the albums are some of their best albums i would say um but yeah you know you got ace of spades which is an absolute classic love me like a reptile shoot you in the back uh fast and loose we are the road crew and then you know jailbait is cool the chase is better than the catch but like the hammer bite the bullet dance jailbait fire fire zero Live to win, you know, those are all like songs I really like. But there are the albums where I love a lot more songs, you know. 
And just because this is a classic doesn't mean it's it's one of my favorites, you know. It, truly, it is a classic, though. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I guess it's just not not my favorite Motorhead album, and I'm. I do really love this album. I listen to it all the time, and this does not mean that it's one of my uh, least favorite Motorhead albums or that I dislike it. I just like it a little less than you maybe do, and that's all right. You know, um, people have different opinions, and we should come to terms with that. Uh, so yeah, I hope you don't <laughs> hate my guts now, and if you do, piss off. <laughs> Next up is gonna be another perfect day. I really like this one. Really great cover too. Just look at that. Look at the colors in that. Um, and yeah, this one opens up with the classic Back at the Funny Farm and uh, Shine, which is one of the songs, like the weaker song on this album. Then Dancing on Your Grave, which is really good. Rocket, One Track Mind, uh, the title track, Marching Off to War, I Got Mine, Tales of Glory, Die You Bastard. Um, so yeah, all fantastic songs. And um, this was when Eddie left the band and Brian Robertson took his place. Uh, <laughs> and Brian Robertson was quite kind of weird. And, and all these Hells Angels type fans from, from Motorhead were like, oh, I'm going to beat his ass. I'm going to kill him, you know, <laughs> because he used to go on stage with like pink sweatpants and he had like bright red hair. Um, somehow he didn't want to play the old songs. So he wouldn't want to play Ace of Spades, which is like one you just need. I mean, some people, that's one of the only songs they know about Motorhead because they don't listen to the new stuff, right? So, I don't know. I, I think I think he did bring something really good to this band. And uh, the guitar on this album is really great. Uh, it's kind of like really melodic and then mixed together with Lemmy's like rough and loud bass. Just... It's it's almost like this album is like lightning in a bottle, you know, and it, it couldn't happen now almost, you see. Yeah, that's why I, I put Another Perfect Day so high on number eight, because I really love it and I find myself listening to this one all the time. Next up on the album is going to be Overkill. Probably going to get some, some extra hate comments for this one. Uh, this one, of course, has Overkill. It's the first, this is one of my favorite, probably my favorite Motorhead song. Uh, also, Stay Clean, which was my first Motorhead song. And I remember listening to Overkill uh, in the gym, or at least just a song, you know. I was listening to, like, the This Is a Motorhead playlist. Then Overkill came on, and I heard those drums, and it was, holy shit, that's insane, it's awesome. Then I thought the song ended, and then you heard the drums again, I was like, holy fuck. Is this, is this just the same song, or just another one, you know? And then I... Oh wow, it's the same song. So I just remember that very well. Then I won't pay your price. I'll be your sister, Capricorn, No Class, Damage Case, uh, Metropolis. Those are my favorites. Tear you down, Limp from Limb. I don't really like are memorable as, as the others I just mentioned. Uh, and the lyrics on this one are fine, but like for example, in, in Metropolis, some of the lyrics make no sense. Like absolutely nothing even let me admit it to that in this autobiography it was like you see I, I told you it makes no sense like doesn't really have a message then it's a cool song you know but some of the other ones are cool songs and have just way better lyrics you know I think especially in the later years the motor albums really improved in uh, terms of lyrics the lyrics just became better with each album eventually Speaking of kick-ass lyrics, that brings me to my next album, which is number six, with Orgasmatron. Um, Orgasmatron, the title track, has some really good lyrics. So you got Death Forever, Nothing on My Sleeve, Ain't My Crime, Claw, Mean Machine, Built for Speed, Riding with the Driver, Dr. Rock, and Orgasmatron. I just named all of the songs, and I love every single song on this album. There's not a single one where I'm like, this, this one is kind of weaker. Um... Sure, some of them are kind of weaker, uh, but I still love them, even though they're a little weaker than the other one. I just love the other ones more. Uh, so it's basically that sort of album with this one. You know, this was a four lineup, a lineup with four members. So it's this album is just raw, loud, fast, and just 
heavy as fuck. So I love it for that. Which is why it's one of my favorite albums by Motorhead. Next up is The World Is Yours, which is um, dedicated to Ronnie James Dio. Uh, it opens up with Born to Lose, which has a great drum intro. Uh, I Know How to Die, Get Back and I mean, I can't just name all of these <laughs> titles, but I love them all. The Lemmy way of saying the album is over is, is with Bye Bye Bitch Bye Bye. <laughs> Brotherhood of Man has great lyrics, which ex is exactly what I meant earlier with like how Lemmy became a better lyricist with each album. The lyrics are fantastic on that song. And yeah, overall, it's, it's kind of a short album, 40 minutes. Uh, but Motorhead always had kind of shorter albums, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm just mentioning that now with this album. Great album, I can't recommend this enough. One of the best, definitely the best of their last five albums. So, uh, yeah, the world is yours. Next up is Bastards. Love this album. Uh, this was my first ones I had. This was actually the first one I had. I used to have it on picture disc. But then I decided to get this one and you gave the other one away because I don't need two copies of Bastards. Of Bastards, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, opening track, On Your Feet or On Your Knees is really good. It's about, like, TV and all this messed up shit going on in the world. It's kind of a dark album, actually, this one. Death or Glory is great. Born to Raise Hell, some of, somewhat of a classic, actually. And then you also have Don't Let Daddy Kiss Me, where the album kind of slows down. And he, Lemmy wrote the lyrics like four years before making this album and thought a uh, woman should, you know, sing this song. So she tried to sell it to Joe and Jed and some other female rockers, but they <laughs> they all didn't want it somehow for some reason. Uh, so yeah, he decided, well, fuck you all then, then I'll sing it myself. Uh, and he did a great job with it. It's not one of my favorites, though. Um, I like the song, but it's... It's kind of where the album slows down, which, again, I don't know about it, you know. <laughs> then Bad Woman picks right up. Bad Woman is one of my favorites. And this used to be my favorite song, Liar. I really like that song. It used to be my favorite. Uh, of course, we got we Bring the Shake and Devils. Um, so, yeah, tons of stuff to look out for on this album. Got a simpler cover art. Still kind of nice layering with like Ace of Spades in the back and the wings, another layer of the wings and Snaggletooth and then the two knives in front of it, you know, which is really cool. So, uh, yeah, bastards. And now top three material. Number three is going to be Inferno. One of the, you know, arguably their heaviest album. Most definitely their loudest album. I, I can tell you from experience. <laughs> Because it's, sometimes I'm just listening to Motorhead on vinyl, listening to all like all of them in a row, listening to like a bunch of them at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but every time a new album, you know. Uh, <laughs> eventually, I get to Inferno, and I do not adjust the volume. I don't do anything with it. And my good friend Tim can tell you, because he knows, I don't do anything with the volume. And then all of a sudden you get to this album and it's loud as fuck like really loud you do nothing with the volume then you get turn then this album is over it's loud as hell they put another album on your final player needle on it then it's like not loud at all it's like wow i need to adjust the volume so you put it louder so yeah it's their loudest album for this one the same thing i love every single song in here i can just name them and say oh i love this one this one this one but then you can also just read the track list. But I really like the songs here. Smiling Like a Killer was one of the first songs I um, I listened to from this one before I even had the album. And Warhouse Blues is, is just a downright blues song, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Uh, and Life's a Bitch is also really good in terms of lyrics. This was also Lemmy's favorite album, maybe. I, I'm not sure. In his autobiography, he said it was one of his favorites, but I once read somewhere it was his favorite album of all, of all time by Motorhead. Uh, it's a sacrifice. So, also a ton of classics. This is a really dark and gritty album. It's, it's kind of muddy, you know. It's heavy. It's aggressive. It's all about war, and, you know, it's, it's great, truly. I also really love the video clip from Sacrifice. And I love the drum solo Mickey D did when they played Sacrifice. 
for example, like stage fright, that that concert show um, where they filmed. It's just really good stuff. Mickey D is my favorite drummer, and uh, he did a great job with that drum solo. I also love this cover art because I'm not sure if you can see it or if you notice it. If you know about it, you already can tell. This tongue is a dick and his throat is a vagina. So that's, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Lemmy made that call to, <laughs> to have that on the cover. Uh, and they actually, I think they ended up removing the dick as a tongue. Uh, in America or, or England, I'm not sure where, uh, but they didn't even notice the vagina in the back, so that was still there, which is so funny to me. Thought you could beat me? Well, you didn't, because there's still a vagina in the back, right? So, <laughs> I just love that. Diehard Motorhead fans will already know what my number one is, um, because they know what album was missing, but it's Overnight Sensation. This was their return to a trio lineup. And it just worked so well. Uh, from the opening track, Civil War, to I Don't Believe a Word, which is one of their best ballads. And then again, Eat the Gun. They're, the title track is really great, Overnight Sensation. You know, Shake the World, Listen to Your Heart. Just a great album, you know. It really has everything on here. You got ballads, you got a few slower songs, and you got the most aggressive, fast songs Motorhead ever did, you know. So... That is why Overnight Sensation is uh, my favorite Motorhead album of all time. Uh, I really love it. I find myself listening to this one the most out of every Motorhead album. And I really, I really, really fucking love it. Uh, I also just love the cover art with like green going on in the back. You know, we also got green going on. Overnight Sensation is my all time favorite Motorhead album. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> So yeah, let me know what is your top five or top three Moda albums or if you want to give me your entire ranking because you have so much time on your hands. <laughs> Just do it. You know, I'll read it. I read every single comment. I heart every single comment. I reply to most comments. Depends, you know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more heavy metal and horror content, make sure you subscribe to Slasher Pepper today and join the Slasher Army. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. See ya. have waited this long. Hell no longer awaits. Hell.